So just a quick show of hands, how many people in this room are, are looking for a, a technical person or a partner to work on a project with? I can't see the entire. So like maybe half the group, maybe a little less. Um, so how's that going? Here's some smirking. So maybe it's not going so well, right? It's kind of a tough challenge to find someone to, to help you build you know, your dream. Um, and that's one of the things I'm going to talk about today. And I'm going to weave in some iOS development stuff along the way. Um, so my name is Andrew Belay, as Bastian said, and uh, I founded three companies in the past three years and failed more times than I can possibly count. What I'm about to tell you is that the best way to find a CTO and build a kick-ass product and company is to stop wasting your time and energy trying to find a CTO, right? The title of this talk, Everything a GSVR Needs to Know About iOS Development in 25 Minutes, is a little bit of a lie. I will tell you everything you need to know, but more importantly, I'm going to tell you how to actually find a, a CTO in three easy steps. Okay, moving into the first step here. There are only two broad categories to finding a CTO. You either hire one or be one or become one, right? It's pretty much the universe of options. You either find one, or you become one. But we've already established that everyone in the room who's looking for a CTO is not having a lot of luck. So that gives you another choice, which is either to keep doing what you're doing, or try something else. And the funny thing is that for most of you who are looking for a technical co-founder or a CTO, you actually already have the bulk of the skill sets that you need as a CTO. Because a CTO only does two real things in terms of their responsibilities. They craft a technical vision, and they build a great team, right? Certainly it helps. It's a huge bonus if they're highly technical themselves, and most great CTOs are, right? But they don't actually do the bulk of the building. The reason it helps so much to be a great technical engineer as a CTO is because that helps you build a great team. You're able to attract amazing talent if you're respected, right? And you're seen as a visionary in the engineering world. But it's possible to do it without. So here's my question to you guys. Show of hands, how many of you know someone who can one, craft a strategic technical vision, can two, build a great technical team of talented engineers, can three, be deeply technical, and of course four, are available to work with you on your project right now? Oh man, I see a couple of hints. That's great. So there are a couple of people out there who are available and ready to join your startup and have what it takes. So I don't know why you guys are here, but. <laughs> um, so to be honest, if you're gonna pursue option number one, hire a CTO, you're kind of shit out of luck right now. Um, it's really competitive and it's not going very well for most people trying to do it. And this is what we, the problem we've chosen to tackle with Founder Soup, right? And we've had a lot of success, but it's slow and limited. So step one is to stop trying to find a CTO for 30 days and find your inner CTO. OK, so congratulations. You've all just been promoted to CTO. You need to go run out and get new business cards. Um, seriously, though, I think you'll get a lot more respect if you if you attempt to be a CTO before you find one. So now you're all MBA CTOs. OK, let's get into the iOS piece a little more. We'll start to weave that in. So how many of you are familiar with the concept of rapid iteration? OK, that's a lot more hands than the other questions. That's good. Um, so can someone, does someone want to volunteer what they think that process is? No. No one's bold enough. So maybe we're not so familiar with it. Fail fast and often. I like that a lot. The build, test, debug, rebuild. I like that even better. Yeah. So I call it the four Ds. Define, design, develop, and deploy. 
This is a methodology that I use in my first company, Metamere Labs. So I kind of label this, I guess, as maybe define design develop deploy. And then I heard uh, test and then sort of this repeat. Um, but those don't start with D's, so I don't include them. Um, so let me d dive into this a little deeper. So the define step, the, uh, the end goal of the define step is a one sentence value proposition. This is the hypothesis that you're testing as a developer, right? So you're making an alarm for deep sleepers or snoozers or a children's read-along book or a stress-relieving meditation app or an app that makes shopping easier for men, right? This is some hypothesis you have that you want to test. The trap that most people fall into, even though they understand this methodology very well, I mean, you call it what you want it, um, but we've all been taught it, right? Go to the design school if you haven't been. The trap we all fall into is that we don't actually follow it. We come up with a hypothesis, and then we fall in love with it, and we don't iterate. We refuse to follow the process. And this is one of the key lessons of this whole talk that I have, is that all you have to do is have faith in the process. It's not about building your own technical skills, because you actually have the bulk of these skills already. If you can make decisions and execute on them, then you can define design. You may not be able to do the details of the development, but you'd be surprised at how much of this you can do as well. And then deploy, right? The challenge is you're all looking for CTOs who you think can do all of these four steps. The problem is that's not the case. You're looking for someone who's very deeply technical, and the odds are they can only do this one step, right? So that's why I recommend that you first become a CTO, because you actually have more, more of the skills you're looking for than the person you're looking for does, right? All they can do generally as an engineer is do the development. You need to have the technical vision. You need to build the team, right? So moving on, the design step. Um, the deliverable at the end of the design step is a set of mock-ups and high-resolution diagrams. If you look around this room, and I've been here for the last several months, this is what you see on these whiteboards, right? Look at four soils. That's all I have on, the, on these whiteboards is really high-resolution mock-ups. Go open their app and play with it. That's what got created. If you go to a talented engineer and give them high-resolution mock-ups and screenshots, they can build your app in no time flat. I created an app in three hours the other day that connects people uh, via LinkedIn. The hardest part was figuring out the LinkedIn API. That was a ton of work. But once I had the drawings and figured that piece out, it was like three hours to design and develop the app and then launch it to the app store, right? The development piece is only difficult because you make it difficult, because you're constantly redefining the app as you go along. So if you use the process that we all know works, you can build an app quickly with a small number of resources. Okay, so the development piece is what I could, that's probably another talk. You know, how do you actually develop an app? Someone was joking with me before, uh, before the talk that I should start to talk about all the entitlements and the, the setup that it takes to build an iOS app. And I definitely can do that. That would be incredibly boring and you probably would not wait, walk away with anything useful. Um, in fact, maybe we'll do that in future sessions. We'll go through the basic setup of building an iOS app. What's more relevant is to know that across the street here, we have one of the world's best <coughs> engineering schools in the world, right? And so there are folks that can help you, but you have to be the technical visionary because most of those guys are undergrads, right? And they're not ready to be a CTO. This is what we found working through Founder Soup is that if you go ask a room filled with the world's most talented young engineers and ask them how many of you are ready to stop what you're doing and become a CTO, they don't raise their hands. Because a CTO is someone who generally has a ton of experience out in the real world, right? And this is where your skill sets come in and complement theirs. So really the challenge here is to break up the roles and responsibilities of this part of your startup, of this part of your company, such that your engineers can execute on the product vision that you have. Finally, the deploy step. I mean, this is really fully and generally the business person's territory, right? Submitting the app to Apple, of course, that's the engineer's job. But pricing the app, determining whether you want to do a soft or hard launch, marketing the app, getting downloads and good reviews, um, appearing at the top of the app store, 
designing your app in such a way that Apple will feature it, these are all things that are probably going to fall into a non-technical person's bucket rather than the technical person's. So the bottom line on the sort of process for creating an app is that it's four simple steps. Define, design, develop, and deploy. And then, of course, there's this hypothesis testing that occurs, and then a rinsing and repeating. The key activities, I don't know, there's at least 10, um, starting with ideation in the defined step, uh, initial sketches, initial market testing, right? I mean, I wrote a post on Quora the other day. It's been getting a lot of attention. And one of the reasons it's gotten a lot of attention is because there's this photo of a piece of wood. And the piece of wood is the original Palm Pilot, right? Uh, I was named Jeff Hawkins. Walked around for 30 days when he was thinking about the Palm Pilot with a piece of wood in his pocket, right? That's the sort of level of market testing that he was doing. He was literally walking around on street corners, pulling out this block of wood and sort of fake punching in it, uh, you know, his graffiti language that he eventually ended up creating, um, walking around. So this is the level of prototyping that you guys are extremely capable of doing. In fact, you're far better at it than an engineer is, right? Because generally, you have a bigger picture. Of course, then there's graphic design, there's back-end development, there's front-end development, there's user testing, <coughs> monetization, marketing, launching. And of course, really, this whole process is just applying design thinking to the process of making an app. So now that you are the CTO, it's time for you to prove something using the process that I've just uh, laid out. So after you find your inner CTO, and you realize that you are capable of doing 80% of the things I just outlined, of this 4D process, you then need to go prove something. And this is going to allow you to bring in the technical talent you need, right? What we saw at our amazing Founder Soup event the other day was I don't know, 15 teams out of 18 get up on stage and say, hey, I'm looking for a technical co-founder, right? And if I was to go sit down with a lot of those teams and ask, what progress have you made? You say, well, I haven't made any. I'm looking for a technical co-founder, right? And so yeah. you get stuck. You've got your definition of what your product is, and then you can't move into the cycle, and you can't move forward, right? Well, why would an engineer who has a million opportunities in front of them want to join your team if you can't move past the defined stage? This is the point. Find your inner CTO. So enter this loop and start to prove something. Once you do that, you'll be able to fire yourself. <laughs> you'll be able to fire yourself because you will have the respect and empathy of the engineers that you do know or the group that you start to build up, right? So you can't get the respect and, and uh, trust you need from a potential CTO without understanding their world. And so by becoming the CTO of your venture, you finally have a chance of actually finding the person you're looking, looking for. So with that, I think I'll stop and take any questions.